Hello and welcome to another presentation. In this presentation I'm going to go over the information we can find on the liability orders. And you'll find after watching this short video that the liability orders are not conducted lawfully. This is sort of an extension of a uh, presentation I did previously. But there's more to be had on this one, so let's uh, combine the two and stick them together. You'll have to review the other presentation as I'm not going to repeat what I've stated previously. If we look at the Justice Clerk Society Procedure and Liability Order application, you'll notice it was originally dated April 11, 2011, and has been revised in 2023. So it's relatively current, if you will. Now, we have to look at a specific section of this uh, publication to find out uh, the information we need. Specifically, we're going to look at or, uh, section number four, and it states, an order is made when the presiding justice pronounces it, and it is recorded in the court. Now, if you'll recall from a previous slide presentation that I'd done earlier, uh, we contacted the court, uh, magistrate's court in Lancaster, and there was no evidence or reference to a court file number. So if there's no reference or evidence to a court file number, then obviously there is no valid court. Further, as I stated previously in another presentation, you file your paperwork with the council as opposed to filing it with the court. Well, this creates a conflict of interest because there's no way that the council is going to forward your paperwork to the court, so the whole process is flawed anyway. And it was confirmed by a telephone call with the magistrate's court that the court actually... Um, works on behalf of the city council. They've admitted that. And in fact, they rent the room and the people that are in the court that operate the court, or so-called court, within the day of your hearing uh, may or may not even be uh, actual court employees. Your court hearing typically for council tax is done by a legal advisor. And then the magistrates uh, state, you know, what they want. However, the magistrate's not making the decision the legal advisor is, and therefore the magistrates are not qualified for their job. But anyway, if we look further at this thing, it says when the, when the uh, order is made, when the presiding justice pronounces and it's recorded in the court register, see section 3. Since repeal of the prescribed order, there's been no court-produced order. So that's telling you right there, when their own documents, the courts aren't producing an order. Therefore, if the courts aren't producing an order from the court, then there is no actual hearing. And it just goes on further to say the council's software should generate a notice that the order has been made, which is sent to the defendant. It says the, the, the council's software. So therefore, it's, it's confirming now that the council is using software to register the complaint and also to register the judgment. This means that the court is not actually functioning as a court, and in actual fact, the council is taking on the judicial role of the court, which is not allowed under the law. Therefore, all court hearings are null and void. Okay? So I'll reread that sentence. The council software should generate a notice that the order has been made, which is sent to the defendant. They should not be signed or endorsed with the name of a JP or court officer, still yet, still less a justice clerk. That's because the paperwork is not being issued by the court itself. Given that fact, a justice would, if they signed it, would actually be, well, they'd be liable for it, but it wouldn't be lawful. Now, when we went through this on a previous presentation, you'll find out that the uh, summons that comes in there in your, in your paperwork, in most cases, not all, has a legal seal from the Crown, which is another flaw with their paperwork. As we now know, it's generated by the Council. Therefore, how can it have the legal seal from uh, HMRC or the Crown or whatever you want to call it, when it's actually just simply uh, paperwork issued by the court via some software? Therefore, it's likely a template, and they just fill in names, and bang, out comes the list, and they send it off to you. Now they also, when they when they send it to you, and they file it with the court, they file it electronically because it says right here software, right? 
so it's sent like email and they're they're charging people in some cases 30 40 50 60 70 pounds to issue that order I don't think it costs them anywhere near that to send an email and nor does it cost them that to print paperwork and mail it off to you and actually it's supposed to be 30 pence if I recall correctly therefore there's a flaw in their paperwork yet again now if we continue on with this document it says some councils are still sending out notification in the form of a liability order but even so it is not a court generated document it is a notification that the order has been made by the justices that's also incorrect because if it's not a court generated document like I said earlier then the council is taking on the judicial role of the court and we've already covered previously that that's not permitted it's a notification that the order has been made by the justices no it isn't when you get a uh, notice of liability that is not in fact a court order it states right here it's not a paperwork that's issued by the court therefore you probably don't have a liability order issued by the court because it's simply not permitted here therefore it's only a notice of liability therefore it's not enforceable in court now it says procedures prior to hearing the court and its staff should not give the impression that the council is in charge of the process that there is an admission that the council is operating and they are in charge of the whole process that my friends creates a conflict of interest is that the council gets revenue from you by extracting it from you and yet they're in charge of the process well obviously they're going to make sure they win if a response uh, respondent writes asking for an adjournment the court should ask the council for its views but the decision on the adjournment should be made by a bench or a member of staff with powers to adjourn under no circumstances should the correspondence simply be sent to the council or respondents told to deal directly with the council in relation to the adjournments we've already seen up above that the council is in charge so why would they want to grant you an adjournment they want to railroad you in any way shape or form that they can because the revenue that this thing generates is in their best interest so they can spend it willy-nilly whichever way they want if respondents wish to enter into negotiations with the council about payment they should be directed to the council but advise that the court hearing will remain fixed until further notice well we now know based on this here one slide that the council is in charge yet we know previously we've covered that the council can't take on the judicial role of the court therefore the whole the whole outfit is uh, is a sham now, how come this thing doesn't have a case file number how come when you filed your documents they didn't have case file numbers how come the documents that were served to you with you along with this uh, whatever this thing is supposed to be liability order and the paperwork that went with it how come it didn't have a case file number yet over here there's a case file number now when I called the magistrates court in Lancaster they stated to me that there is no case file number and I had this confirmed and the call was recorded and we've covered this previously well if there's no case file number up until it's been issued and they're all issued under a blanket uh, bulk, hist bulk listing then the justice of the peace or the magistrate didn't review your case on a on a point by point case by case basis which makes it unlawful okay so this is another problem so if you have a judgment against you with respect to council tax I would go back to the court in person so they can't generate some BS paperwork and tell them you want a true certified copy of what's on the register most times you'll find out the court was not even listed in fact one case I did the thing was gone to appeal and I went to look for the judgments against that person and there was no judgments so they're uh, paying a court penalty for nothing same with with you if you have a liability order that was issued against you and you've been paying you're paying it for nothing because the documents are flawed 
And if the document is flaw uh, flawed, then that is uh, basically fraud on the court, and you have a legal remedy against such things. Now, if we look at the magistrate court rules, this is just the front first page of it, which we don't have to get into. I just want you to go look this up for yourself. If we look at Section 68, Proof of Proceedings, the register of the magistrate's court or an extract from the register certified by the designated officer is a true extract shall be admissible in any legal proceedings as evidence of the proceedings of the court entered into the register. Well, like I said, most times if you ask for that registry copy, it doesn't exist. And therefore, you have a right to demand that on your hearing date if you go into an appeal. And if they can't produce it, then you've got proof of evidence on the, on the uh, fraud on the court, which is a criminal offense. And so uh, many people are uh, trying to appeal it, which don't understand the court process, which is the whole reasoning for bringing this presentation forward. If you find yourself in this position, there is a legal recourse to it, because the uh, court can't compel you to, to uh, participate in an act of fraud. Again, you should have a copy that looks something like this. It'll be slightly different depending on which court you're in, but it says memorandum of entry. And so that's what you're asking the court for. If there's a judgment against you, go into the court uh, three days after your hearing, or later if you have to, and tell them you want the memorandum of entry. And you'll notice this document isn't signed. If you go through my previous presentations, you'll find out it should be. Okay. I'm currently working on a book regarding council tax. If you wish to be notified when it's complete or have any other comments or questions, I can be reached at the email address shown here. I would also suggest that you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I provided that link as well. I look forward to bringing you additional content in the future, and uh, hope you found this information useful. Thank you, and have a great day.